Asus ROG, a phone that holds no bars or at least that has to be the idea behind this series because as we all know the Asus ROG One was a phone that broke records. It had the fastest processor on an Android phone and it broke all benchmarks that we saw. Thanks to Asus for inviting us to spend some quality time with the ROG 2 and this is a phone that's supposed to top the already untoppable ROG 1 and to see how Asus did it, let's watch the video. So here is Shri Ari from Mr. Phone and this is a first look at the Asus ROG 2. But of course, before we get into the video, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do that. And also hit the bell icon right next to it so that you get notified for all the videos that we put out. The first thing that we see is the design of the phone and the ROG 2 looks very similar to the ROG 1 with of course slightly subtler graphics at the back. The ROG phones are already less gamery or gamerish looking than others and this one is even subtler. The bigger difference is that the ROG 2 is taller than the first version and that has been consciously done to provide a better gaming experience experience when holding horizontally. With the phone, you have the things that you had with the ROG One. This time you have USB-C ports on the phone just like the ROG One. Uh, one is at the bottom and two are on the side for connecting peripherals and things like that. This time the better thing is that both these ports actually support uh, QC 4.0. Last year, one of the ports that is at the bottom supported QC 4.0 but the one on the side only supported QC 3.0 so that's good news. Uh, you have air triggers with the ROG Two as well and these air triggers are quite nice. I think uh, compared to a lot of phones, the air triggers on the ROG2 are quite good and in the limited time that I got to play with this phone, uh, it was quite fun. You get Gorilla Glass 3 on the back, so it's not just the tap, you can also swipe. Um, there are other features coming so that your gaming experience becomes much better and you do not have to take your fingers off those air triggers. You get dual front speakers, that is why there is a bezel and I'm pretty pretty happy with it. I don't want a phone that is bezel-less but has bad audio. You have dual front speakers that the ROG One also had but this time they're 2.5 times louder compared to the ROG One. You have DTS-X support for both the headphones and speakers. So you have four mics so there is very less probability that you block all of them. Uh, you have two vibration motors in the phone. One is a lateral one, one is a round one. So you have different types of vibrations also happening and with two vibration motors you're actually covering all three axes. Uh, so you have the X, Y and Z axis all covered in the two vibration motors and you have the classic lit up ROG logo. Now when it comes to design, although it might look the same, there are a lot of improvements on the ROG 2. Now from design, let's move to the display. And this time we have a bigger 6.59 inch AMOLED display compared to the 6 inch AMOLED display on the ROG 1. Of course, because this is taller as well. You get a 120 Hertz refresh rate on the screen. We've already seen higher refresh rates with the OnePlus 7 Pro and 120 Hertz is just crazy. On the touch substrate, the refresh rate is even higher. So you have a 240 hertz refresh rate on the touch substrate as well. Uh, for protection, you get Gorilla Glass 6. So that, that is the latest Gorilla Glass protection that you can get right now. The other big change in the display of the ROG 2 is an in-display fingerprint scanner. When the ROG 1 came out, the in-display fingerprint scanner wasn't really a very popular concept. Uh, but with the ROG 2, you have an in-display fingerprint scanner under that AMOLED display. Also, the touch latency on this phone is 49 milliseconds according to ASUS and that is quite high. Uh, it's very close to the best in the market and I think with all the other gamer features that you have in this phone, this should be the perfect gaming device for you. You can also switch between the refresh rate so you have 120Hz, 90Hz or 60Hz that's standard. You have a true HDR display as well and ASUS was quite happy to tell us that this is a true 10-bit HDR compared to an 8-bit HDR that the OnePlus 7 Pro has. Now from the display, let's move on to the most important part of the ROG2 which is the performance part of it because this is a gamer's phone. This is an enthusiast phone and this phone needs to push out the best performance there is in the market. And what do you know, you get the Snapdragon 855 Plus. 
the first commercially announced phone with a Snapdragon 855 Plus. Uh, so the difference in the Snapdragon 855 and the 855 Plus is that first of all you have a higher clock speed on the CPU. So on the 855 Plus you get a 2.96 gigahertz clock speed and even the GPU is higher clock compared to a Snapdragon 855. Compared to the 640 hertz on the GPU on 855 you have 675 megahertz clock speed on the 855 Plus. So you already have a faster processor than the most powerful processor available in the market right now and you have fast storage speed as well so you get UFS 3.0 now UFS 3.0 is something that was not really a big deal in the OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro but this being a gaming phone this being a phone that has to be pushed to its limits I think the UFS 3.0 storage is going to make a big difference now for all that power you of course need a lot of cooling now inside the phone cooling has not really been a very popular concept there are smartphones with it but mostly the solutions are kept to the minimal but with the ROG 2 like everything else this is is also where Asus is going all out. So you get cooling which is a three layer thermal cooling. So there are three layers of cooling. The first layer is a vapor cooled chamber. Now this is a copper plate, a copper chamber which is vapor cooled. So you'll have all that heat being dissipated on that copper plate. You have the second layer which are copper heat pads all over the PCB. So you have that also on the ROG2. So if you ever get to open the ROG2, you'll realize that there are heating pads laid all over the PCB to dissipate heat from wherever it can. Now the third layer is more of an external thing where you have air vents which is on the design of the phone and external fan module as well which is a module that you can buy separately. Now coming to software Asus has done a phenomenal job with the 6Z and they're bringing the same software to the Asus ROG2. So you get that minimal Android look with the features that Asus wants to give you with minimal minimal bloatware which is essential for a gaming phone or a performance focused phone. Also Asus is working with a lot of brands they're working with Tencent they're working with Asafol to make sure that you get the best gaming experience. They're working with Shadowgun Legends uh, for the 120Hz refresh rate as well. They're working with Asafol to do the same as well. Uh, that will be happening in the future but right now the Asus RG2 seems like a phone that is packed with the best from every area. You have the best processor possibly available. You have a 120Hz refresh rate which is industry best. You have a body that's second to none. You have cooling systems that a lot of computers computers don't have. Coming to the cameras which are generally not the most important part of a gaming phone. So Asus wanted to go all out of course and they're giving you the IMX586 it is probably one of the most popular camera sensors in today's age. The 48 megapixel sensor that powers phones like uh, the Asus 6Z, the OnePlus 7, the 7 Pro, the Redmi Note 7, uh, the Redmi K20 now, the Realme X. Excellent camera phone so you have that same sensor here. You also get a secondary wide angle camera as well. On the front you have a 24 megapixel front camera uh, and Asus has actually put a lot of engineering inside it because they placed the front camera right where the back camera is at the back as well and this is a difficult feat to achieve because you have so much Crandon already there. Asus wanted to make sure that when you are streaming or live streaming from your Asus ROG2 you are not blocking the front camera. Finally the phone also comes with a 6000 mAh battery so yes 6000 mAh. Uh, a big battery size, probably some of the biggest in the industry. And to fit that big battery, Asus had to actually go with the PCB design where the chipset actually sits on the right side of the phone than the top uh, part of the phone near the camera. And that is exactly where the air vent is as well. So I guess it worked out for everyone. So you get 6000 mAh battery inside. Uh, according to Asus, that gives you 7.1 hours of constant PUBG on this. Uh, you get a 30 watt charger in the box as well and this supports the USB PD standard. So there is the IC in the charger and the phone as well which means that you can use almost any other USB PD supported charger and get that 30 watts or 28 watts whatever that uh, charger supports which means that you can use your MacBook charger as well. You can use uh, other USB PD supported chargers from Qualcomm or other brands as well. With the 30 watt charger that you get Asus promises 4 1000 mAh in 58 minutes. So in one hour, you're already filling up battery that most phones don't even have. Uh, now coming to accessories, something that Asus ROG of course comes with. It's one of the phones that popularized it. Uh, so you have a lot of accessories with it. There is a twin view dock 
2. So this is the second version of what we had with the ROG One. So with the TwinView Dock 2, you get the same size display with 120Hz refresh rate. Uh, you get a 5000 image battery inside the dock as well. So if you put your ASUS ROG 2 in that dock, you are getting an effective 11,000 image, uh, which is crazy. Apart from that, you also get a controller uh, where you can actually also take out the triggers like you can in the Nintendo Switch. So you have both on the left and the right. You can attach that directly to your Asus ROG as well. Or you can do that with the controller and use the phone just as your display. Now the phone will be coming out with a price that might seem premium to some of you. But I guess with all the things that are fitted inside this, even that price doesn't justify the experience that you get with the ROG 2. Uh, and with that, I'll leave you to it. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know if you want to see a full review of the ROG 2. We'll do that as soon as we get the device in the office. Uh, and with that, thank you so much for watching. This is Shriari from Mr. Phone and I'll catch you in the next one.